Hi, my name is Simon Fowler. Thanks for coming to my talk. Today I'm going to show how I've managed to reconcile session types and graphical user interface programming by extending the model view update paradigm. Protocols are all around us, so my favourite simple example is that of a two-factor authentication workflow, for example on a banking application. On the first screen the user enters their credentials. Now, if these credentials are correct, the server can choose to send back a challenge key, which the user must then enter into a hardware token. Now, if the response from the hardware token is correct, then the user can perform the remaining actions, so for example, taking out a loan. We can encode this as a session type, so session types can be thought of as types for protocols. Using session types, we can check that a program conforms to a protocol as part of type checking. So, here, on the left-hand side, we've got a session type for the client. The client sends the credentials and then handles the three responses from the server. So the server can authenticate us, send a challenge, or deny us access. The server can then perform the dual actions, so where the client sends, the server receives, and where the client offers a choice, the server now makes a selection. Having seen the types, let's have a look at how we can write programs using session types. Here, we've got this function two-factor server, which takes a channel endpoint of the server type we saw on the first slide. The program receives the credentials, checks if they're correct, and performs the appropriate selection. Now, each communication action, such as sending or receiving, returns a new endpoint to be used in the rest of the application. Let's have a look at some of the errors that can be caught. So here, we've incorrectly implemented the protocol. We've sent this hello message where this isn't encoded in the session type. Now, this can be caught by session types pretty much straight away. Now, this time, we've only implemented part of the protocol. Now, this is unsafe since the other participant could be left hanging forever. Finally, a more insidious type of error. What if we tried to use one of these endpoints twice? So here, we're binding the result of the first receive to T and reusing S to receive the credentials again. Now, this is ruled out through the use of a linear type system. Okay, so far, so good. We can write a server program quite nicely, but how about the client? So we could write something in the same sort of style as before. The problem here, though, is it's not interactive, so the function has a fixed set of credentials and the challenge screen is replaced by a fixed generate response function. Really, what we want is for users to be able to enter their credentials into a UI. OK, so let's try writing an interactive client. So on the left, we've got this rendering function with username and password boxes. When the user presses the submit button, the callback function on the right retrieves the username and password and performs the session communication. But is this safe? In fact, it's not. So even though the linearity looks like it's being respected, there's nothing stopping us clicking the button twice and violating the protocol. And that's just the start of it. We can't even really do syntactic linearity well if, for example, we wanted to do a reset password button. So as a result, even though there's a wonderfully rich body of work on session types, most seem to be command line applications. What we really want is for communication actions to be triggered by UI events and send user-specified data. So this work aims to address the problem of using session types in GUI applications. My approach was to build upon the model view update architecture pioneered by the Elm programming language. MVU is a very well-loved GUI paradigm that works really well in the functional setting. By extending the formalism with session types, it was then possible to implement a linearity-friendly MVU library in the Lynx web programming language, which then allows us to write idiomatic server and client code for session-typed web applications. OK, so concretely, this work makes three main contributions. The first is Lambda MVU, which is a model of the MVU architecture formalized as a concurrent Lambda calculus. The second is an extension of Lambda MVU with session types, 
we need Elm style commands for side effects and various extensions to support linearity. The third is an implementation and example applications showing that this can be used in practice. Okay, so let's have a bit more of a look at what model view update actually is. So in an MVU application, the state of an application is contained in a data structure called the model. The view function renders the model as HTML. Interactions with the page can then produce messages which are processed by an update function, which then produces a new model. Let's see this with an example. So here we've got the simplest MVU application you can do, really. We've got an input box, and below it, we've got a label which just shows the text that's in the box in reverse. So the model is just a record with a single field containing the contents of the text box. The page can produce one message, update box, which contains the new contents of the input box whenever it's updated. The view function takes the model and produces some HTML. The value of the text box is set to the contents of the model, and the div tag below the box shows the contents of the model in reverse. The onClick handler attached to the input box produces an update box message in response to each input event. Finally, the update function takes a pair of the message and the old model and returns a new model with the new box contents. Okay, now let's have a look at the formalism. So Lambda MVU is a concurrent Lambda calculus which represents HTML tags and attributes as monoidally composable elements. Since we're not robots though, I'll stick with the syntactic sugar for the rest of the talk. Now rather than bombarding you with reduction rules, let's have a look at the semantics by example by revisiting our box and label example from before. So here we have model, view and update functions that we defined on the previous slide. So to explain the notation here, everything before the semicolon is the concurrent fragment of the language. Everything after the semicolon is the page displayed to the user. A Lambda MVU program starts with a run command which specifies the initial model and the view and the update functions. The initial page is empty. Now the run command spawns an event loop process. So the left hand side of the bar shows the term that's currently evaluating which needs to calculate the initial page to display. It'll end up with a pair of the model and the page to display. The right hand side of the bar records the view and the update functions. This then evaluates to the initial page, which then gets propagated to the DOM page and the process returns to being idle. Each HTM element has this at symbol next to it, which records an event queue. At this point, nothing will happen until a user actually interacts with the page. So at this point, the user has clicked the box and press the K key. There are no handlers for the click, key down or key up event, so they can be safely discarded. There is, however, a handler for the input event. We can then spawn off a handler thread to evaluate the event handler logic asynchronously. So this is what we have at the top here. We've now got an update box thread, which is evaluating in parallel to the event loop process. Now, since the message is already a value and the event loop is idle, we can handle the message. We've got this handle meta function, which calculates a new model by calling the update function, calculates the new HTML by calling the view function, and returns a pair of the new model and HTML. Eventually, this evaluates to the updated model and HTML, which finally gets propagated back to the DOM. Okay, so that's the core formalism. With that in hand, we can have a look at how to extend it with session types. So there are two key ideas. We need to keep linear resources in the model and then have UI messages trigger client-server session communication. Furthermore, we need three concrete extensions. We need commands, which are from Elm already and allow us to perform side effects. We need linearity, which allows us to use session types safely. And finally, we need model transitions which allow us to have multiple model types, and we'll see why in a minute. OK, so first, let's have a look at commands. So commands are a feature of Elm which allow the event loop to perform side effects. Here, we have an example of a long-running computation being performed asynchronously. 
So the model is an option type which either contains the value or states that the result is not yet available. And there are two types of message, one which starts the computation and one which contains the result after it's been computed. The view function shows the result if it's available or placeholder text otherwise. We also have a button which produces a start computation message. Finally, the update function is a little different. It now returns a pair of a new model and a command which needs to be performed by the event loop. In this case, a start computation message resets the model to nothing and spawns a thread which will evaluate the long running computation. Eventually, this will return a result message. Now, if we get a result message, then we record this in the model by returning just and then the result, but we don't perform any commands. The next key ingredient is allowing linear model and message types. Now, unfortunately, Lambda MVU doesn't support this out of the box. So if you remember the handle function from earlier, you'll see that the new model is used non-linearly. It's returned for future use, and it's also used to calculate the HTML. As we saw earlier, linearity violations are unsafe. We lose all of our guarantees. But luckily though, the view function doesn't really need the linear resources. Why do we need to do communication while we're rendering, for example? So as a result, we can refine our types a bit. So if we have an extract function, which gives us back the unrestricted fragment of the model, and we modify the view function to work on the unrestricted model, we can get linearity back. Okay, so let's have a look at a simple session type to web application. On the left, we have a pinger, which contains a button to send a ping to the ponger. Once the user clicks the button, the ponger's button becomes activated, and we can then send a pong back to the pinger by clicking the send pong button. Now, let's try writing the code for the pinger using MVU. Our session type sends a ping, receives a pong, and then repeats. The model is either pinging, meaning that the user can press the button and send a ping, or waiting, meaning we're waiting for a message from the ponger. There are two types of message, click raised by the button, or ponged, meaning we've received a pong message along with the channel needed to send the next ping. The update function first case splits on the message. The handle click function then needs to case split on the model. If it's pinging, then we can send a ping and spawn a thread to wait for the response. But what if it's waiting? Now this shouldn't really happen as the button is disabled, but in this case we just stay in the same state. Something similar happens with handle ponged. If we're in the waiting state, we can transition back to the pinging state, but otherwise what do we do? In this case, we throw away the extra channel that we get, but really both of the cases in red are illegal states which should never happen. That said, we need to put them in to please the type checker. The problem here is that the types aren't precise enough. We're treating models as some types. Instead, it's better to have multiple model types and a way to transition between them. In turn, this makes illegal states unrepresentable. Here's the pinger written using transitions. The model is now just the pinging state along with the ping pong channel. We can also only handle the click message. The view function just contains a button which raises a click message. The update function now only needs to handle the click message. As before, it sends a ping and then sets up a thread to receive a pong but it now also transitions into the waiting state by specifying a new model, a new view, update and extract functions. Similarly, the waiting state now only needs to handle ponged messages and it transitions back to the pinging state when one is received. Okay, so to wrap up, session types are great for finding protocol conformance bugs, but linearity makes them really difficult to use in GUI applications. So to address this, this work has formalized the MVU paradigm as a concurrent lambda calculus and extended it to support session type communication. I've not had a whole lot of time to talk about it, but it's also implemented in the Lynx web programming language as part of the paper's artifact, along with some examples. Thanks very much for listening and I'd love to take any questions.